Hi, y'all. Hope you can hear that. My name is Brain Smasher. This here is a collection update, and I like uh, sometimes starting these off by making you listen to something really cool. Check this out. Ceremony the day before the death. Rules. This is what Steve Tucker was doing before he joined Morbid Angel. I think it rules. And this came out on Hammerheart back in, oh, 2000. You should be able to pick this thing up for a, just a few bucks. It's cool. It's the only thing they ever did, but as you will hear, absolutely awesome. I don't have a whole lot. Um, I have been getting in a ton of stuff, as usual. Uh, most of it is VCLTs, so I'm kind of holding that aside because I want to do like a special VCLT video. So this might be a little compact. I want to keep it up. I feel like some of my collection updates are kind of like marathons, so I don't really want to... I, I want to keep it light here since it's spring, shall we? Uh, and then after this is over, we'll be listening to something else. I'll show you that. So mostly vinyl, actually, uh, surprisingly. Um, but let's get the discs out of the way for a minute, shall we? Uh, pick up this abomination uh, on the recommendation of my man uh, Steve over at s and Young. Um, good YouTube channel. If you don't subscribe, you uh, definitely should. He shows a lot of late thrash, early death, some black metal kind of stuff. Great dude. Um, and he hit me to this. So this is, uh, I want to say pre-master uh, Paul Speckman's thing. Maybe, I'm not sure. Um, came out in... To make you wait till I find out what year this came out, you know? Yeah, look, I don't know. <laughs> Either way, this is really, really hitting a spot for me right now. Um, the the very cross lines where thrash metal became death metal when death metal was born. Um, I know we can get into a lot of that too, but like, there's a ton of great stuff that, that just. It does what I love about thrash, and it does what I love about death metal. And when it does both, I go fucking wild. Um, and so, this is awesome. Uh, it is called self-titled. So this is a Metal Mind reissue from uh, a couple years ago, I guess, with some bonus tracks on it. But yeah, I think this is the only thing they ever did. Um, so thanks, Steve, for the recognition. This is ruling. I got a lot of stuff here in the play. Um, <laughs> I don't think, yeah, I guess this next one is a new release. Sometimes I realize, like, I do a collection update and none of it is a new release. And I feel like, why do you guys even watch my fucking channel? <laughs> Everything's a reissue or an OG, right? This is an, uh, a reissue. Um, the poster fell down, but for quite a while up there, god damn it, there, um, for this Venture Krieg release, I am not even going to attempt to say that. Um, but so this is a, the first time this was reissued on Compact Disc. It is, it, it's a reissue, but it never came out. Um, so this is a, just a four song EP from a Swedish black metal band. It was recorded back in 98 in Abyss Studios. And if this would have been a band that successfully took off and recorded like a full length or something, this is exactly the kind of thing that would have come out on No Fashion. Um, it's hyper melodic, really speedy, just blasphemous as all fuck. This is so good. Do yourself a favor, pick this one up if you can. It came out on the Oath. I believe I had to order it from overseas, but it wasn't too bad. Um, so there you are. Uh, this thing is absolutely great. Members went on to be in Opeth, 
a little bit of stuff here and there, but nothing too uh, noteworthy or significant. But um, when this first came out on cassette and Bandcamp, um, I listened to the shit out of this thing. Just played it over and over and over and over again. It's excellent stuff. If you love the old 90s Swedish stuff, um, the black metal stuff particularly, that thing rules. Uh -huh. A new release. Surprising. Do you got any guesses? It's the new Brodekin. Harbinger of Whoa! This thing is brutal. Uh, kind of a latecomer to this band. Um, I picked up a few of their releases four or five years ago or so, and they were good. I dig them. Um, not like my favorite, favorite grindy death metal kind of thing. This is really of an ilk of death metal that I don't spend a whole lot of time listening to because a lot of it can be kind of dumb. Like, if it gets anywhere too close to like Devourment or whatever, like, you can have that. You can have your fucking Devourment. I, I don't give a shit. Um, I don't like the squealy squeals and the fucking palm muted ripping and stuff. However, Rodokin is uh, doing it a little bit differently for me, and that's enough. Um, and it's really cool to hear these guys, after so many years of not releasing anything, put out something so good, so accomplished, and maybe like the fully perfect realization of their sound. Like This is what they needed to sound like. Um, it would have been a shame, I guess, if this band was just like buried by time and dust and had never recorded something that fully captured what they can do as a band. Um, it's perfectly produced. It's, it's absolutely perfectly produced. Everything is crystal clear, but has the girth of a fucking devil ball. Um, it's awesome. I, get, I really, really was impressed with this. I put it on when we were out driving around. Um, and I just couldn't pay attention to anything other than it. Got home, the album was like halfway over with, and I just sat in the car and, and listened to the rest of the thing in just complete and utter amazement. Uh, new drummer rules. I uh, hope they record more stuff. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't checked this out, do it. If you're kind of like me, like the dumb stuff, the, the simplistic stuff, the super brutal kind of stuff is maybe a little too unmusical for you. I don't know. I think this is worth listening to. There's enough there to chew on. But, I mean, the, the main thing is that it is absolutely heavy. It's crushingly heavy. Uh, and, yeah. Sick, sick, sick. Gonna be on the top of a lot of your end lists, I do believe. Um, I've been on a real Judas Iscariot kick. Um, he is one of my favorite black metal artists, but I've been really out of the black metal thing for several years and just kind of hit a, I don't know, do you do this? Like, so I have a memory card in my, uh, in my garage, I have like a, a little player thing that you can put a little memory card into and it's got like 50 albums on it and then I'll just like shuffle through it or like on your phone or whatever. Um, so I'll just kind of throw stuff in there that I think I might want to listen to and let it uh, kind of shuffle or play random stuff. So Juice is Scary came on the other day uh, unexpectedly and I just let it go and I was like, oh, this, is, this is really doing it. I don't know, the, the really primitive stuff, the really raw um, kind of stuff has really been hitting its mark, like that bestial summoning uh, that was kind of a rediscovery for me, just really, really did it. Anyways, so I picked up what will hopefully maybe probably be the last Juice Iscariot bootleg LP that I pick up. Um, just because it's never going to end. There's, it's never going to end. It's not that I don't, it's not that I care about it being a bootleg. Like, this would never be in my hands in an official capacity. And I don't think anybody is ever going to allow this to be officially reissued on vinyl. Um... Because if we know one thing about Akhenaten, it's that he sticks to his fucking guns, no matter what they are. To Embrace the Corpse's Bleeding is my favorite Judas Iscariot. How, like, I think that's because it's most similar to my favorite kind of black metal. But I wouldn't say like that this is the album that 
sounds most like Judas Iscariot's best ideas. Um, it's really just like, my main gripe with Judas Iscariot's earliest stuff is that it, the drumming is, is abysmal, terrible. And so once he hired uh, Dwayne Timlin to, to play drums, thought the band got a lot better. And this is like the best pairing of those two riding together there ever was. Awesome record. Maybe a top 10 black metal records of all time for this guy. Um, I don't know, the pressing's okay. It just has like a little lyric sheet. Um, I'm pretty sure Hell's Headbangers did this. I don't know. Um, this collector's item is limited to 660 copies. I'm not sure if that was on the original or not. Probably. Anyway, it's fine. Um, sometimes I just feel like I'm going to be tempted to pay a lot of money for this, even if it is a bootleg further down the road. So if I don't take this opportunity to buy this now, I might regret it later. Anyways, um, so it seems like every month there's a new Juicy Scary bootleg uh, coming out. And I've picked up like, I think three of them in the last year or so. And so like, I, I'm okay. Uh, Another thing is I've got some like medical expenses piling up, so um, trying to kind of be a little thrifty here and there. Um, I think I'm gonna do a pickups video here in a couple of weeks or something. I don't know um, where I show like albums that I picked up really, really, really dirt cheap, like under ten bucks. Um, this was not one of those. However, I am very happy to support my friend and artist. Um, Michael Rize, Michael Rize, with the great filtration. Uh, finally on vinyl. This came out on cassette last year. Um, I think it's finally going to go on CD, maybe by Ixiel as well soon. Um, these uh, these guys are really doing a new thing. <laughs> a very different thing. It's hyper blasting, complex, uh, super riff and guitar oriented uh, kind of stuff. And it's wild. It's really, really wild. They're really, really doing a new thing. <laughs> you really gotta have a, an ear tuned to the, the nasty black metal to kind of figure out how uh, brilliant the riffing style is and everything that's going on. But that is it. It's called The Great Filtration. Um, they also have a seven inch out can't pick this up anymore because it's sold out in like 15 minutes and copies are going for like 85 bucks sorry about your luck um next i did a trade with my homie uh beyond the Lishgate, and he traded me this one dark millennium i'll show the celestial burden kind of liking that my glare game today is looking really good this is an album cover the colors i absolutely love i love the kind of directional shapes to it. It's a pretty good compositional cover if you do, if you ask me. Uh, there's the guys. So this is a German death metal band. These guys are weird. Uh, there's a lot of really unique ideas coming out of these guys. Um, and they did an album in 2022 that was really, really amazing. Um, so this is no exception. This one came out in 96 originally, so this is a Floga pressing. It came out a couple of years ago. I think it's just black vinyl. Um, but I don't know, there's a lot to digest on this thing, so if you're up for a challenge, something that's um, pretty different. It's not like crazy technical or progressive, really. They're just doing some really wild things. And I think what kind of glues it all together, what really holds it all in place is the vocalist. One of the most just thrilling and energetic vocal performances uh, of the mid-90s. The album is over, and I'm going to put on something else. So yeah, that was just a four-track EP. This is also a four-track, well, a three-track demo. Rasal Gethi with Oblita Divinitas. This is their demo. I'm wearing the shirt. <clears throat> yeah, that's why I picked it. Uh, yes. So, Dark Millennium, awesome. Awesome stuff. Uh, just an unforgettable vocal performance from that dude. I, it's not very often that I'm super blown away or impressed by any vocalist that, that isn't doing, like, you know, 
know, clean, sing songy kind of stuff. Um, but like my favorite thing about Dark Millennium is the vocalist, um, and he's surprisingly consistent on that album that came out a couple years ago, like I showed you. Uh, here, let me, let me. This one. Acid River. Also worth checking out. Um, a couple more vinyl and I'll get out of your way. This has been on my wish list. So one of the things I do sometimes is I go on Discogs and I just like... Since I've been maintaining a Discogs wish list for so many years, sometimes I just go on there and I see if there's like newer repressings of things that I thought I might be able to find OGs of. And that is how I found uh, this. So the OG of this was on my wish list for so long, never less than like 125 bucks, rightfully so, but I didn't know until I looked into it that this had been reissued on Soul Cellar, um, maybe 2022 or one or something like that. And there was still one in uh, the Seasons of Mist distro, I believe, for 20 bucks. So I picked this up on the cheapy cheap Dude, great album. This is my first um, Aeternus 12-inch. Um, love this band. And it was really the new holder that got me kind of re-excited about Aeternus. Um, a band I have absolutely loved dearly since day one, really. Um, but yeah, the new holder versus an oath sounds a whole lot like Aeternus. It's kind of like a wearing your influences on your sleeve kind of deal. Um, so I've been really listening to that new folder quite a bit, and um, it made me want to revisit it. So then I became. It's really great. Uh, it's it's. There's a lot of bands that sound like black death metal, but this is. Gosh, I, I want to say something thoughtful and poignant. Um, there's just they're so unique. <clears throat> they are a death metal band that has the darkness of black metal somehow melded in, forged into their sound, and it's incredible. Uh, their first album, until, uh, Beyond the Wandering Moon, is also great, um, but I think this one is really my favorite. Um, it was recorded in uh, Greek Holland Studios, so you know it sounds amazing. Uh, but yeah, if for some reason you're not familiar with this thing, no matter what you're into, this thing is worth your time. It's incredible. And I think I got the last copy in the States. Okay, so a friend of mine on Instagram reminded me that this is a very, very heavy release. And I have been listening to it. So I threw a noise fest in my garage uh, at the on Good Friday. And I rented a PA system. And it sounded really, really good. So the day after, uh, I had a PA system in my garage just to fuck around with. And the first thing I wanted to play kind of randomly, um, but it was just on my phone, was this. And I played it through that PA, and I cranked it up as loud as I possibly could, and I stood in the middle of my yard listening to this album just booming out of those speakers, and it was so heavy, just thunderously heavy. And it was an experience that made me remember that this is really good, um, and I've been listening to it quite a bit. I owned it back in the day, and I just was like, kind of, this isn't really my thing. I don't know what I'm doing with this. I picked it up in a used bin, and it just, um, it just kind of fell by the wayside, and I got, I forgot about it. Now I have it on LP, and now I have a CD version of it coming in the mail soon. Thor's Hammer with Doramegsnat. Do Domedagsnat. Uh, yes, a short-lived band featuring um, Runhilda Gamelsinter, uh, who was also in Aghast. I saw Spectral Voice the other night live. That was an experience. And uh, before they played, they introed with Aghast. Anyways, this thing is... If, if all, It's worth it alone for the first song. So... I think there's like one or two tracks that were recorded in a studio. There's like a rehearsal thing. It's just a hodgepodge of the only four songs that they ever recorded, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Southern Lord did a reissue of this a couple years ago. Moribund originally released it. 
So Stephen O'Malley was in the band. I think basically the two guys from Sun were in this band with Lord Hilda. So she was, uh, I think she went to college or something in Seattle, and they um, just spent a little bit of time together writing this stuff. This is a sticker. Weird. But yeah. Excellent heavy stuff. This cover was used on a compilation, and I didn't know that this was her until I got this in the mail. But so there was a compilation that came out in the late 90s by, I think, Dwell Records. Uh, and the purpose was to highlight um, women in metal. And so they used this on the cover. Um, and it was a great compilation. A lot of people picked it up. And it was kind of like, guys, can we try to, you know, kind of respect women for a minute? Um, and I think it worked and it was cool. Uh, noteworthy for that. Couple more heaters. You got a, you got an icebox ready to cool off your thing before we get into it i'm going to remind you again that i have been doing a podcast i want you to listen to it i really 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 enjoy doing it um it's a lot different than this right here really all i do is i pick about 10 songs that go together for some reason uh and then i play those songs and every once in a while i just kind of stop in and tell you some facts and and yada 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 it's like hanging out with me listening to music it's awesome I'll put links down there below for you to check it out. I want you to listen to it. There may come a day, there may come a day where I call it a day on this YouTube channel, and that's all I do. Just saying. Not saying I'm making any plans or whatever, but I, I have that there kind of as a backup. It's an easy process for me to do, and I absolutely am having the best time making it and putting it together. There may be some copyright, legality kind of things that could make it not possible to do it anymore in the future. But for now, it's there. It's awesome. I love doing it, and I want you to listen to it. Brain Smasher Smashcast. Um, so, I also picked up this Funeral Winds God Slayer Zool LP. This was sitting in this distro for like 18 bucks or something. Um, and I could have swore that I had this on CD, but I didn't. Um, so I couldn't find a CD copy of it, so I wound up getting it on vinyl. Um, Dutch Black Metal. I think this is a, yeah, smoky clear kind of deal. Um, this came out in 94, originally. Um, kind of to no avail. It wasn't on a big label. They didn't really do much this riff. Awesome stuff. Check out Ras El Gepi. Okay, we're back. I had some technical difficulties there. We're getting new internet soon. Hopefully that makes this easier and I can live stream better. Um, so yeah, a couple more. Uh, Dutch black metal. It sounds quite a bit like some Celtic Frosty kind of stuff, but Kind of with a different spin, kind of like what Dark Throne did, but in a different direction. Um, this one, this pressing is by New Era, and I guess they did like a limited edition 100 pressings for NWN, and I got 94 100. Good shit. Um, I, I, the reason this uh, fell into my lap again was I was playing my spotify playlist that was like i have a what is it unholy fucking black metal playlist i'll put it like that below it's awesome i know it's on there um so this is kind of a uh i would say party dawn but maybe part poverty dawn copy of an album that is fucking awesome uh, it's kind of a rare pressing and i picked it up pretty cheap so I'm stoked about it, but it's like, it's not in great shape, but I don't know. It is what it is. The price was right. It plays pretty well, and this album fucking smokes, and uh, you don't see this very often. But, uh, Hate Eternal, Conquering the Throne, the only one I care about, really, because the lineup on this thing is way different than the rest of the band's stuff. Um, so this came out originally in 2001, and this pressing by Earache 
It's from 2014. Thank you, Earache, for putting the year of release on the back of your release. Uh, there's the lineup, yeah. Eric Tan on there, Doug Scarito from Suffocation, and Tim Young, and Jared Anderson. That's a dreamy fucking lineup if ever there was one. This thing is killer. Um, I, I don't know if I can really like compare it to the rest of Hate Eternal's discography. I'm not really familiar. Uh, I used to have King of All Kings, but I don't know. There's something about like Derek Roddy's playing on that thing. I just don't like it. But anyways, like there's a seam split, so that kind of sucks. And like it looks like it's just sat out of a jacket for years and got I don't know maybe cat peed on or something. I don't know. It's kind of gross, but whatever. Um, I'm a dirtbag and my collection isn't perfect at all, but copies of this usually go for about 100 or 200 bucks or so, and I got it for like 30 ships. So, stoked on that. This album rules. Some brutal kind of... It's one of those albums that uh, among the among the ashen death metal bands that were like deteriorating, falling apart, and getting boring in the late 2000s, they started in 2000 and just floored everybody at the time. Um, last one. So this was presented to me many years ago from uh, my buddy Tanner from uh, the Sequiae as a terrific alternative to Burtsum. Um, and, you know, we could use a lot of alternatives to Burson because that guy is a worthless sack of trash. Um, so I appreciate the recommendation, and it definitely um, fills that gap. So this band is called Reapta, and the album, I don't know. It was, when it came out as a demo, it was just called Demo 2001, but Halki Kualen Mian. Halki uh, so check it out. These kids, they have uh, tails on their butts, and the Grim Reaper is taking them to the uh, butt tail destruction factory. I don't know. Uh, but it rules. It's uh, grim, raw, mid, mid to slow paced black metal from Finland. Um, and it, it sounds exactly like Burzum. Yeah. That's probably nothing else I can tell you that would describe it any better than that. It's excellent stuff. Um, and this came out on WTC, Black Vinyl, nothing, nothing much to it. Picked it up on the cheap too. So there you have it, that's a collection update uh, from me, whatever. Not resleeving on camera, because it's wrong. I don't do wrong things, ever. Uh, so uh, until next time, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I want to know what you're listening to down in the comments. Let me know. Also, I want to find out, when you check out some of the stuff from my videos and you have thoughts about it, I kind of want to hear from you. I want you to say, hey, I checked out that Dark Millennium. It was really good. I agree with you about the vocals or whatever. Hit me up. Let's check about the stuff. Until uh, next time. Later. That was a great video and it was made possible mostly by me but also thanks to the undying and kind support of my patreon subscribers thank you all i love you if you are interested in being a part of my patreon channel and supporting what i do you are welcome to join at the url below it is only six dollars and 66 cents per month and you're gonna love it